हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू आइडल कोचिंग दिस इज पार्ट टू ऑफ मैक्रो इकोनॉमिक्स क्लासिकल वर्सेस कीन्स थ्योरी एंड देयर इज अ नोट दैट इट इज एन एपिसोडिक एक्सप्लेनेशन सो टू गेट बेनिफिट प्लीज सी वीडियोस फ्रॉम पार्ट वन सो वी आर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट टोटल आउटपुट ऑफ इकोनॉमी इज डिवाइडेड बिटवीन कंजम्पन एंड इन्वेस्टमेंट एक्सपेंडिचर वॉट डज दिस मीन this means that whatsoever be the production in a country is being divided into two parts one is consumption and other is investment there are many kinds of products being produced in a country and there are many kinds of services too but all is being divided into two parts according to classical theory for example if you are getting 5000 rupees as your salary or 5000 dollars then if you are your consumption is 3000 dollars then the rest 2000 dollars you would be investing you are not saving the saving option is being denied by classical theories and it is a kind of uh, criticism also being discussed by keynes later on we'll be discussing about it but according to classical theory the assumption was that any kind of production in the country or in the economy would be divided into only two parts that is consumption and investment only next option is the quantity of money is given and money is the only medium of exchange uh, means that money was being used at that time as a medium of exchange you can understand this with this picture that money is required to buy or sell something okay next and most important assumption according to classical sphere was wages and prices are perfectly flexible means there is a perfect elasticity in wages that could be decreased or increased accordingly to bring out the situation of full employment actually ac pigu has put a logical part at the time of great depression about this he argued that if there is a free economy then there could be a condition of full employment actually he argued that uh, the rigidness of wages are the reasons for people are not fully employed because if the wages are more then also if wages are less then also there could be a possibility of unemployment how it is we'll be discussing about it suppose if there is a condition that um, trade unions are pressurizing government that you should raise the prices of labor and government passes a an act that labor minimum pricing is this and this 250 or any kind of price so what happens if it is more than what is expected by the suppliers or by the uh, producers who are giving employment they will try to hesitate to give more employment because they know that now if we are if they are giving employment they would be at loss their costing will be increased so they will hesitate and what happens at this time the number of people are now more to work and the demand is less means supply is more and demand is less giving rise to the condition of unemployment and this was the pigus contention that if the economy is given the freedom the demand and supply functions could be automatically responsible for creating employment if government uh, government interventions is removed from this economy so that was the pigus um, contention that he argued about that if the freedom is given then the wages would be adjusted accordingly and there could be a situation of full employment this could be understood by this example this could be understood by the example suppose this is a diagram and these are the real wages on the vertical and horizontally we are taking employment the curves are this is supply curve and this is demand curve okay the intersection point is e it is an equilibrium point where employment is matching the real wages for example if wages are w2 and employment is n2 that means at these wages their production units are given employments means at this point 
there is employment in the economy fulfilling these wages now if suppose the wages are higher than this at this point that is w1 the employment will be lower because wages are high what pu was saying that if wages are high then there is a gap between this this you are watching this my cursor this this is a gap this is a gap between the supply and demand means supply is high and demand is less when wages are w1 so if wages are rising then supply will be more and there will be less demand means giving the situation of less employment okay so that was the main reason that pigu has said that if this wages are being lowered then the condition of full employment automatically could be brought out by the demand supply functions without government intent interventions next point is there is a perfect information on all part of all market participant it's also a part of perfect competition where the uh, buyers and sellers knows everything about them uh, about the counterparts that what uh, should be the knowledge within about all the products and uh, technologies uh, should be there in the minds of buyers when they are going to purchase anything means it is uh, somewhat a part of that perfect competition we have discussed later uh, earlier so the next point of assumption is men money wages and real wages are directly related and proportional what does this mean it is a very important point means money wages and real wages are directly related and proportional if money wages are increased then real wages will also increase and vice versa but what this real or money wage is suppose a person is getting salary of 200 dollars then it is known as money wage okay and when that 200 dollars is being spent by that person in the market that is his real wage that is is the power of money how much power he owns for example if he is going to market and purchasing 10 kg of rice he is getting 10 kg of rice at the rate of 20 dollars per kg in 200 dollars so his purchasing power is 10 kg of rice that means his real wage is the money power or the real power he is having with purchasing those commodity now suppose if the condition is of inflation that is price have risen and same time employer is also giving you a higher salary suppose he has increased from 200 dollars to 300 dollars but the price of rice have risen to 40 dollars per kg means if you want 10 kg of rice you will have to need 400 dollars of money to purchase 10 kg that means now you are having only 300 dollars as your salary is being risen from 200 to 300 but you need 400 to purchase the same quantity you were purchasing earlier means that now your purchasing power is decreased because of inflation in spite your money wage has risen but you are not able to purchase 10 kg of rice now you might be purchasing less suppose 8 kg so your purchasing power has decreased means the real wages has decreased now this is a, this is a contradiction because money wages and real wages are directly proportional so why money wages when increased real wages are decreasing no actually it is not decreasing it is increasing but not to the level which we are supposing to be increased you can understand this with this diagram this is a diagram in which there are three lines you can see that the dotted red line indicates the price it is indicating price and the blue line or the black line you are watching this cursor it is the wage the money wage you are getting okay this is the salary a person is getting and the light blue is his purchasing power that is real wage now 
you can see that this point where the price is more at the time of inflation when the price is more what is happening that your salary is less and so the less is the real wage means the both are less when the price is more means this both are less they if they are compared with the prices then they both are less so they are directly proportional but at the time when price is lowered suppose it is coming here price is lowered so what happening what is happening see when price is lowered the real uh, the money wage is increased see this line black line is now above the red line and also this line real wage is also increasing it is reaching to that point of red line but it is risen means both are rising so it is a contradiction you are feeling but when we compare it with prices they are both are rising at the fall of prices and they both are falling at the rise of prices okay now next is savings are automatically invested and equality between the two is brought about by the rate of interest very good point means there is no option of saving in classical theory they want those saving to be invested automatically how it is being done by changing rate of interest for example suppose there is an income then if a person is having some income he would be consuming something and he would be saving but classical says no there should not be saving that saving should be transferred into a kind of investment in assets or into a kind of investments in loans and anything else but this should be invested this should not be saved so what should be done with the savings if people want to save they want to save they don't want to invest how their savings could be invested that could be done with the help of rate of interest that's a very interesting so let's understand this suppose this is rate of interest okay the rate of interest the interest if rises or the interest if falls what happens when it is risen be because the government has increased the rates then investment for lending loans your savings in bank will be increased because government is giving you interest when government is giving you more and more interest you will try to save that money in the bank so if the rate of interest is falling in many countries in america in many other countries this have taken negative also nowadays because people if they are keeping money in bank they have to pay for it but in under developed and developing countries because the government need money so they want they attract people to keep money in bank and for that they give more interest of rate of interest but if the rate of interest is being fallen what will happen people will not keep the money in bank because they know that they will not get any kind of interest then investment in assets and further consumption they will try to invest somewhere else where they will get return so if it is risen what will happen and if it is fallen then what will happen at the fall they will invest in assets and when they will invest in assets they that could be in house land and goods then this will create money and money will go towards market and market from market that money will go towards the seller who is ultimately producing the products so the production will be benefited by the money and in turn they will give more production by giving more and more employment because they need people to give more production so this rate of interest when fallen will create employment but if it is being risen what will happen there will be no money in market and if there is no money in market the sellers will not get any kind of return and if they will not get get return they will not produce and they will not give more employment so is it so if the rate of interest is fallen that is very much beneficial yes if rate of interest is high people will try to save and that is the main reason why underdeveloped and developed countries are facing the conditions of 
नो एम्प्लॉयमेंट और अंडर एम्प्लॉयमेंट ओके सो वी हैव कवर्ड द एजम्पन्स ऑफ क्लासिकल थ्योरीज दीज वी आर दी एजम्पन्स वी हैव कवर्ड एंड नाउ विल बी कविंग टू से लॉ सेल्स लॉ ऑफ मार्केट ही इज बींग नोन एज जीन बैप्टिस्ट से He was a French economist. He argued that supply will create its own demand. How? The question arises. Suppose, actually, this law works in barter system, and you know that the concept of free exchange economy exists in two ways: product related to barter system and product related in money system. but say have given or highlighted the barter system the supply and demand functions automatically or supply creates its demand in barter system let us understand what is barter system you might be knowing it i am revising you that a person who is giving his product and exchanging it with another product he is having books he is exchanging it with bananas that is a barter system how and how this barter system is helpful in creating the supply and demand automatically means supply how supply is creating the demand suppose this is a person and he is producing 100 kg of wheat only but he is having some kind of assumption that he want banana uh, apples and he want shoes he want television he want spade and many thing other else he want for his needs but he has only wheat so he will take this wheat to the market and try to exchange it with apple television shoes and spade and with these products demand will increase in the market because these people like these people there are many they will go to market and because of this the uh, the demand of these products will increase and the increase in the demand of these products will give rise to employment because people who want to produce these produ these products will have to increase their production and to increase their production they will hire people and to hire people means they are giving employment and in money system it was not uh, being said by say but uh, it happens in money system too uh, where the things are being sold of money and then money is been taken to buy another product which is also happening today also then how money system is with the help of money system also there could be employment raised for example suppose there is a producer and he want to produce something he want to do production and for that production he needs some factors suppose he needs land he needs labor and he needs machine then would there could be any kind of or any numbers of factors of production but we are taking uh, three and with that also we are discussing about labor so when he is producing that production will go towards market some commodities and those product will when sold in the market would be purchased by some people and that will create money and that money will again come towards the producer now this producer will give that money in terms of rent to the land in terms of wages to the labor and in terms of maintenance to machine and in terms of many other things to other factors also but if we consider about labor when they get wages they will run towards market to purchase the product they want and when they will purchase those product that money will again go towards the producer and that producer will now be in a position to give more employment because he want to produce more and thus the condition of employment could be achieved that was the thing which uh, being ignored by say but some professors like professor hasan has uh, given this uh, whole theory that in money system also there could be a full employment condition okay now next would be discussing about keynes in the third part how he has criticized all these assumptions okay